My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I'm Eric Egalajoth in the Head of Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer. So we continue on as the Kingdom of Gondor. It's been a week. It's been a whole week. I can't believe it. How time flies. And we're, here we are one week on from our valiant defence of Minas Tirith. I choose those words carefully, for it was very valiant. The Tower Guard, of course, taking... An unbelievable kill tally of 700 enemies each. But then, as some people have pointed out, if the orcs had actually focused on the fountain guard, they would have fallen. But it was merely because the orcs were doing everything they could to get to the square that the fountain guard were able to hack and slash from the sides. Oh. Harad, why do you vex me so? Oh, wow, we've got so many generals in this town. But generals everywhere. <laughs> You're returning to Minas Tirith. Let us set up camp here. Ah, uh, Prince Erkenbrand. Fascinating. People as if they were my own friend. Rohan must have taken some losses. Minas Tirith. They retrained their tower knights. Their fountain guard. That's good. That's very good. What are you actually doing? Getting chicken farming, interestingly. Now, I could do with some archers to head south, actually. So if anyone's got some spare archers going. Kaya Andros. Um, or can we take them from here? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Take a unit of those. And I'll take two units of those. Because I'm going to take you. By your command. I'm going to take two of you. Yes. And you're all going to go and try and join Captain General Boromit in the south to defend that bridge. And then one set of those archers will go out to Hennethan Noon. Alright, that's that all done and dusted. In the south, we're not really doing anything. Fanwilond. Because Harad seems to be coming for us. Should we send out some generals to do a little bit of raiding? Galasgil, Yorthon. Go and harass this enemy. Can't do anything about the City of the Fountain. Uh, I, uh, Wolferson, I read your comment about changing it to perhaps uh, Ecthel Minas Ecthelion or something like that. Well, Minas does technically mean tower rather than city. But, um, Ergo, so does it, uh, not Ergo, also like Barad also means tower, though it's quite annoying, really. Uh, but Minas kind of means um, tower or like fortress kind of thing. S town is Ost, and Karas is a more accurate representation of city. But anyway, that's all by the by. But Karas Ecthelion or something like that, I don't know. I prefer City of the Fountain. And also, I think if people who are watching this, who may not have um, watched that episode, who may just drop in or something like that, it's going to be a little bit more... City of the Fountain might actually mean something rather than if it was just Karas Ecthelion or something. Now, while I do like going for Sindarin names, I am going to stick with City of the Fountain this time. Right, I can't do anything out here by the looks of things. We're just waiting on him to get... Uh, well, a town hall, really. If I can get a meeting hall out here as well, once we've built the barracks, we can keep him there, and then he'll get free upkeep, and so will the unit that we train. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. That's getting free upkeep. Have you already got free upkeep? Yes, courtesy of the castle. We don't really need it again. But we could use this opportunity, we could take this opportunity to capitalise a bit and get some economical buildings and end the turn again. Now, I was speaking yesterday with my girlfriend's twin sister and she was saying that she'd um, noticed from Lionheart's channel that his production value is greater than mine. We're fighting for Minas Tirith. Oh, this is good. This is very good. Some Sauron's will, otherwise it's all just trash, really. Uh, but she was talking about how his production value is better than mine, and I I've watched quite a few Lionheart videos. I, I was, a, I, 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 he's probably the let's player that I've seen the most, to be honest. And other than the little like introduction that he has at the start of every video, which is the flaming lion head, I would suggest that his videos contain very little to no editing at all as well, and it is just he'll sit down, start recording, and end. Now that's obviously just the standard Let's Plays I've watched. He may have other videos, and there's certainly a call and an argument to suggest my lore videos could certainly do with a bit of a touch-up from um, somewhere. Some sort of production enhancement or visual enhancement. 
but um, at the moment I can't really see. I don't really think that there's too much more I could. There's not too much that you could do to Total War games in terms of editing. I don't think. Uh, that was just something I was thinking of. I um, I'm not sure how you would edit standard Let's Plays like this. There we are. So if you did have ideas of how you think uh, a video like this could be edited, then I would happily hear them. Sorry, I'm trying to talk and set up, and it's something I've never been very good at. <laughs> and it, it, it leads you just saying words that don't really create a sentence. <laughs> it's a bit silly, really, but there we are. Right, we're going to try and hold them at this gate here. I don't normally put the archers on the walls, but on this battle map, the archers are pretty useless. They can't. The enemy can't get up onto the walls with ladders or siege towers. They have to go through those two gaps there and there, which they probably will do. The enemy loves trying to stop your wall plans. Do we get stakes? Oh, they're Mordor. We don't need stakes. Oh, look, you can get right up next to the gate. We've got three units of Lebenin. For the glory of Gondor! The White City will prevail! Now, who's not going to be useful here? Our cavalry generals. So you guys are going to stand at the back. And Faramir will have you over here firing into the enemy. Four long. You're going to be support from over that side. Just stand over there for now then. Uh, and Gondor Militia will worry about all of you in a minute. Make sure you're all in the middle though. Yes, they are. Okay. There you are, Thor Long, that'll do. And we kind of want them to get through the gate a bit so that we can um, throw our javelins at them. So you guys are just going to block the javelin people off. Now, if they do go up onto the stairs, up the stairs, that's fine. I'm not bothered by that. Let's speed it up. Oh, they're miles away as well. That's going to take them ages. I'll talk about it in a moment. A moment. So, um, I mean, there's a, there's a big call to suggest that maybe my thumbnails are a little too basic. Now, as I've droned on about, I love simplicity. Absolutely love it. I really like to look at a thumbnail and know exactly what it is. I don't particularly care for gameplay scenes behind it. I just want it to tell me exactly what that video will do. Because many, the way that YouTube, I would suggest, is set out is that the, they draw your attention more to the thumbnail than they do to the title of the videos. Uh, because obviously the video, if it's titles over a certain length, it gets cut in half anyway. And it's always, that's just always just text. And walls of text are always harder to discern through than just a standard thumbnail. And YouTube latches onto this idea. And it, indeed, it, it makes your, it draws your eye to the thumbnails more. And so I've always wanted thumbnails to be as plain as they can be. And that's what I've done for my own channel. And I have absolutely love sticking with that. Obviously, they have improved since the beginning ones. I've reshaped them. I've used better uh, images in the centers. I've I've adjusted the wording so that because YouTube, whenever YouTube puts a message up, so like tells you how long a video is, tells you if it's in a playlist, it always puts all that information on the right. So I've attempted to alleviate that by putting most of the information on the left so that the thumbnail, you can still see mostly what it says. I've changed the odd color here and there. I think they've improved. But they're still very basic, and that is what I like. So I'm uncertain as to whether or not... She wasn't very clear, you see. Um, so I'm uncertain as to whether or not she means my thumbnails aren't really of high enough production value and they're not really good, for, for want of a better word. Or if she genuinely means I should try and do some sort of editing to the videos. But I'm not really sure how you would edit Total War videos. Because for everyone who finds the campaign boring, there's always someone who finds the campaign fun. I mean the actual campaign view. So 50% of you might like the battles and 50% of you might like the campaign more. And so it's difficult to decide what would I cut out? What would you remove? This is also the same with I was watching um, Claire Siobhan, who I believe is... I'd never heard of Ali A until I saw Claire Siobhan. Uh, but he's got 8 million subscribers. He seems to be the name in YouTube, in British Call of Duty YouTubing. Uh, anyway, I was watching him and her and she was doing Skyrim. And I noticed that she cuts out loads of it. She was sent an, a, a she was sent a, a copy of special edition before it was released by Bethesda to promote on YouTube. That's obviously that's what they do. 
And um, so she was playing just the main game. Now, I've played the main campaign about four or five times, and everyone, of course, has always done up, normally up to the point where you have to go to Kynesgrove. Uh, I normally get to the point where you have to go to Kynesgrove, and then I go off and enjoy the rest of the game, because there's no need to complete the main campaign, in my opinion. Uh, but until you get to the point where Al Alduin resurrects the dragon whose begin name begins with S, Salakanir, in Kynesgrove, if you, before you get to, if you don't complete that bit, then dragons never attack you. I don't know if you know that, but if you didn't know that, that's something to say. So I normally get beyond that bit, at least, so that dragons can attack me, and you've got the full force of Fusro Darshal. But anyway, so she was doing that bit, and because I've done that bit many, many times, I know exactly what happens. And she cuts out so much. She cuts out so much of her just moving around. And I just don't think that there's really a, an, a, a call for that kind of editing for games like this. I mean, I suppose you could cut out, for example, while we're doing the battle, you could possibly cut out the point up until about now when their army actually arrives and we start fighting. But even then, that's such a minor little cut when you yourselves can easily just skip beyond this bit I've always thought of I know it's better to have it kind of laid out more on a silver plate for you rather than you having to pick up your own plate and finding your sandwiches you'd much rather just have all your sandwiches on your plate ready to go but it's a very small very small little detail to ask of you just to skip along a bit if there's a bit that's that's slow you know so I'm not really sure I've, I'd also I've always been kind of against having like an opening scene until I watched shadow shadow spirit of the law Spirit of the Law, of course, is a very big Age of Empires YouTuber. In fact, he only does Age of Empires. Um, and, uh, but I think he's very entertaining. And I really like his voice, <laughs> which is a big draw for YouTube, let's be honest. And uh, in his videos, of course, he has that little introduction with music that he did himself. And that was the first time I really thought, you know what, actually, I really like this introduction. And I think the reason I like it is because he doesn't open with it. So he'll open the episode, he'll talk a little bit about what he's going to do, normally 10, 15 seconds, and then you get his introduction. And I pre much prefer that way. I find the ones such as Lionheart's, where it starts immediately, it begins with his little introduction. I find those far more sort of jarring, because you're straight away you're hit with that intro, even before you know what the video's about. And it, I just, I'd rather get a little bit of info first, and then ha in, watch through the intro. So the moral of the story is, is I'm not sure, really sure what she means by increasing the production value. But, uh, and I don't really have any videos that I don't think are suitable for editing in that kind of way. So maybe it is just she thinks I should do a kind of intro. But I don't know. I've been thinking about redoing my channel trailer for quite a while. And I was going to do it about three weeks ago. But in, we, we didn't get around to it in the end. Uh, Faramir, you don't fire actually, please. Because you're going to shoot over there into that grouping. Also, Athelian Rangers, I think you're killing our own men. <laughs> now, there is no way around the uh, arcing shot here, I'm afraid. It is the only possible way. Oh, Hummingbird as well. I was going to tell you. Oh, I should have said it at the beginning. Hummingbird. I looked over the Anduin changes, and they are phenomenally good. That new Anduin Ranger looks really, really good. And the Karok Guard are perfect. I like that as well that you've made them bigger than the units around them. So I was really, really pleased with that. I'll message you on Steam as well to this effect, so don't worry. But um, I was really, I've just, I literally just checked them just before recording this, so about 15 minutes ago, and um, I really like the changes. I really think they're very good. I'm very, very keen for them. I noticed though that the Rangers are still called To Be Done. Uh, I wondered if that's because you didn't really like the name Anduin Rangers, or if you wanted something a bit more fancy. I don't know. But as I say, I'll talk to you about it in a moment anyway. Now, to the battle at hand, sorry, uh, the enemy hasn't attempted to break in. They're just stopping outside the door. We've only killed 6%. Constant fire, we've only killed 6%. Oh, in, in answer to the gentleman who told me that the Blacklock crossbowmen cannot shoot the enemy when they are defending... Um, the Dwarven City in the Iron Hills, I can't remember its name. Uh, and he was saying about how some of them do high arcing shots and most of them just shoot into the wall, actually, because they can't hit the enemy. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid that that is nothing really to do with the game. That's just, uh, that's nothing really to do with the mod. That's the game's mechanics. Units can't shoot through walls and sometimes their arrow pathfinding is stupid and they try to shoot through walls. And there's nothing really you can do about that. Obviously, the dwarves are a little shorter as well, so they're more likely to shoot through walls as their firing point is lower than everyone else's. 
But this is turning into a very strange run. I've left it, I'll leave it at time six now because then it will only take a maximum probably about two and a half to three more minutes. But they're just refusing to attack the gate. But I don't really want this to end in a draw because they'll continue the siege. So I'm going to gamble. I'm going to open the gate for them. See if that does anything. Oh, Thillian Rangers. I think we've got Gondor Militia. <laughs> Gon Gondor Militia! Gon Gondor Militia! Wider line, step up. Right, those first 54 that we sent in, I'm afraid, will die. But we keep them out there while our archers still have some pep in them. Well, this map is a strange one. Are you getting good shots or are you getting horrible shots? Oh, you're getting quite good shots. Oh, well done. It's the, it's the biggest failing with this game, I think, is the poor archer... Uh, well, pathfinding is not really the word, is it? Line of sight, I suppose, is better. Because realistically, of course, all of those would be firing very well, even the men at the back. But you always end up with a horrible high arc shot. And it's just terrible. And now, so people are saying about how they don't like the sieges in Shogun, but at least the archers all fire sanely. And they don't fire like idiots. And that is, that is definitely my biggest um, gripe. If you for of this game, the part the line of sight for the archers is terrible. The pathfinding, the arrow accuracy is just terrible. They just do silly things. But then this game is old, <laughs> as I say quite a lot when I talk to people about it. Oh, it's starting to not enjoy this battle map as well because the uh, enemy are now grouped together in a cluster gathering. Well done, men! You've given your lives bravely. The enemy have the walls. Look to our defence or all will be lost. There are a few left. Gentlemen, javelin fire at will. Come on, they're in range, come on. First few javelins are away. Benning Guardsmen. We need the rest of the Mordor force to come through. Ah, uh, Forlong's kind of on the wrong side now as well, actually. I could have done with him being in this gap. Benevithilian, your aim must be true. Fire. Good, good. And javelins, how are we doing? Oh, perfect. That's the store. 16 plays 5%. Oh, and the Pelagia Marines. Uh, Lebenin Marines, sorry. The Guardsmen are one of my favourite units. I think they are so good. Oh, and look at that. That is perfect javelin throwing. They don't have very many, though. It's always the problem with javelins. long step up more javelins are away 22% of the enemy has now fallen three the guardsmen are all done but the marines are to go again no oh, and I'm in the tr mountain again I'm in the rock <laughs> Minister Hill Tower of the Moon Minus Morgul Tower of Sorcery Well, sorcery is not technically correct. Morgul means black knowledge. Uh, from its constituent parts, more, which is the black from morn. And gul just means knowledge. So it means black knowledge, which is translated as sorcery. The 
healing ranges will get some good kills, I think. And we've got four long standing by. But now that we're out of our ranged op options... No, keep firing, you fools. We've also got the Lebeningar... Lebeningarsmen are a formidable melee force. A really formidable melee force. So there's nothing to scoff at once the enemy gets... Look at those shield walls. It does not like this map, though, does it? There's a lot of... Just the frame rate is dropping. I used to call it stuttering, and now I realise that it's just the frame rate, isn't it? Get more kills with the javelins. How many of the strongest enemies left? Sauron's will. 104. Oh god, they're probably killing us. No trouble. Let's pop it in. Four long. I want you to run over here. Go to times two. You can normally go to times two without too much of a performance hit. But trying to do times six when it's going slowly just wreck ruins it. It can't handle it. Oh, the enemy general's fallen. Now, the enemy general wasn't a general, he was only a captain. How have some Moran and Guard got up onto the wall? The entranceway is there. They've got to come out up there. Oh, unless that doesn't go to this section and leads directly up to that section. They've got a lot of arrows left. Can I get you to run down? Is there another door out anywhere? No, it's all by the gate. How rubbish is that? Oh, you know what they're going to do then, don't you? They're going to burst out there any second. Oh, they do run through. Alright. Well, the two of you together then. burst in at the right moment. That we might cause some chaos. Well, they all have leadership. The archers are joining in. Yes! Just as Fallon goes in, we get routing. Press! Press! More archers, more archers, we need more archers! Oh, I have nowhere, it's coming back. Perfect, perfect moment of pressing. Come on, chase them down, chase them down, chase them down. Chase them down! Faramir, stop. Oh, look, they, route, they started routing. But we've got the enemy on the run, what have you got to run away from now? 50% of them have fallen. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Something is still fighting. Probably Sauron's will. I don't think they can actually run away. Oh no, it's those ones that are running away. But where are they? Where were they standing? Not really sure. Uh, you've ha you've earned more than enough to return to here, actually. And you gentlemen, same. Get the archers down. You guys get up onto there. I'll leave those where they are. Four long. Are you running over the bridge? Don't. Something's still at still attacking though. Otherwise, this is uh, this would be over. Ah, oh, they're all regrouping at the other end. Capture everything you can. If we continue like I oh, know they're not regrouping. It's just they've got a unit of archers that haven't ran away yet. Ignore them. Press through. Press through. Sauron's will are running away. Oh, cowards! Cowardly cowards! Come on, do as you're told. Do as you're told. I'm running you over there. There you go. Is there anything particularly good, mate? Anyway? You go after them. You hit those maulers. Ah, see, they are reforming.
you just fighting now? Rather than yeah, they're just fully coming for you now. We've killed seventy six percent of them so far. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Apologies for the horrific frame rate drop, but this map is not one of the ones that the game enjoys. <laughs> this battle has been pretty much the whole episode as well. I suppose that's what we'll have to call it, won't we? Defending the Moon. That's a much better name. Much better name. Gondor 4, Defense of the Moon. <laughs> the Moon. I think they might actually be retreating. I'm not really bothered if either of these generals die. We have such an over abundance of generals as Gondor. Uh, I know people obviously go on about me killing generals, but um, that's only really unique generals. Everyone loses generals, but I obviously seem to have a knack to lose named famous generals. But just killing normal generals is... Uh, I'm not... I'm just, I just consider them units. Especially since we added in the option to train generals in I think everyone you get them in your capital city and your capital city only you get free upkeep for them in every other city but only the capital trains them if I remember rightly or the capital and a few select regions but adding that minor ability in makes generals just so uh, easy to replace turnstile generals how far away is that unit going to go they, even the ones that are running still haven't even left yet Oh, I keep killing those. You're killing those. No, they're apparently routing. Oh, what's happening over there? Are you trying to run away that way? Oh, do you think that's where you're meant to set up if someone attacks Minister Thiel from behind? But it just doesn't seem to take that into effect. I would certainly suggest that that's the case. So if Mordor attacks Minas Ithil, it's, they're meant to come from here. So this is where the army should have been. Interesting. But it always deploys at the front because of the files. We've only lost 20% of our army and we've now killed 90% of theirs. So we've got a bit of an issue whereby then no one's actually capturing anyone. Because this orc host isn't technically leaving, the game isn't considering this our victory. Is that someone coming down the causeway? Faramir. Apparently they're firing. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Oh dear. Oh dear, that was really poor planning. That was really, really poor planning. Did they get did you get them running away? Yeah we did. <laughs> well, whoops, that was why they were firing. The enemy wasn't coming down the causeway, they were at the gate already. But that one unit I think is all that is left. There we are. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. There's Faramir. Hasn't even made it out. We've only got a minute left to do what we can. But this one is well and truly in the bag. Fire over the archers, yes. Oh, and there's the cavalry. The day has ended, and with it all hopes for our enemy. We have vanquished our foe. 
Yes. This is a victory yes. all Christendom will come to know. Oh, will they? <laughs> well, that voice clip's not meant to be in there. 347 men fell. Forlong truly earns his name. 2,936 orcs fell. Taking the top spot. General's bodyguard actually killed more than anyone else, even though they only got involved right at the end. And that's because the enemy wasn't actually running away. They were just walking off of the map. So it doesn't count as capturing them. It counts as actually killing them, even though it's, a, it's pretty much the same kind of thing that you're doing. He's, they, they're as easy to kill as they are to capture at that point. But because they are actually walking away and not routing away, it considers them kills. But really, that captures both of those. So if we omit them for their little gamey glitch, the Territorial Guardsmen got the most kills. 180. Well done. The TA defending their home. But I will end that episode there. Uh, I mean, I'll fiddle around with the um, end turn because we were attacked by Mordor, obviously. So we'll get to the end turn and we'll go through all of that process. 4794. All right, well, we don't get a breather. But we'll kill you the same way we killed your brothers. Although that time, a large chunk of that was that their general died and then we ran everyone in. And that is a surefire way to get orcs to rout. I think there's also a stat that's concerned with routing whereby if the units are closer together, then the routing of one of the units is likely to have more of an effect on the other units than it would if they were all far apart. And now this isn't something I've got any real hard evidence for, but it certainly seems that in every game that the, the routing works much like chain lightning. So one unit will route and then normally the, the next units to route will almost always be ones next to that unit. And it kind of ripples out from there. So as I say, no real hard fact to back that up, but it certainly seems that that's the way that it goes. Ah, oh, Dol Amroth have Baratan. Oh, well, let's move in and try and annoy Tirithoros then. Captain of Gondor. I really want you two to get back to Minas Tirith. March, if you can't, go in that fort, get some Let free upkeep. Up Kyra and Justice Cross recruiting those. Minas Morgul. Merge everything together. Only 49 of them now. I really want a library. <laughs> Right, well, the invasion seems to have ceased. Mordor seemed to be all that they really had going for it, and now that they're dead... Yes, my lord. There isn't anyone to carry on the fight, really. They can get a steward hall. And Kyra Andros can get a governor's quarters. That's just incredible. You can get governor's quarters. Ah, oh, you haven't even got a meeting hall, so yes, get me one of those. That'll give you three free upkeep, so take another unit of those. What's your free upkeep at the moment? Only one. Ah, uh, yeah, you get the other one of them then. Change yourselves one of them. All right, so as I say, I think that will end the episode. Nothing else going on in the west, is there? No, he's about to have that extra unit, and then they'll get free upkeep there. But I will leave him there. I'll leave him at the edge, because eventually we will, we will attack Enidwife, and so to have two generals on the border there will be useful in time. But there we are, that will conclude. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. Let me know your feedback on what you guys think of my production value in inverted commas. In inverted commas. And I do hope you all enjoyed the Age of Empires tournaments, even with my... Some would say, well, actually, I was going to just touch on this. The My kind of angry rant about Moan, about rushing in the third place final, has very much split opinion, because whilst there's been quite a few of you who have said it sounds like I'm just a sore loser, which, to be honest, I kind of was. But... There was also a large chunk of you who completely agreed with me and uh, felt that rushing wasn't really a viable, it didn't, it wasn't conducive to a good, lively game. It was kind of an undercutting move, like, I don't know, so it's a difficult one, difficult one indeed. But my, most of my griping was just, I was a bit fed up with having to, rec with recording all of those, unfortunately, and it was just a lengthy one. So, um, that was my own moaning, which was really poor, I'm... My growth seems to have been more rapid than I've had time to catch up with, if that makes sense. So rather than slowly growing through up in size for YouTube, we've, we've exploded recently. And uh, as we say, in a few weeks, I've gained 2,000 more subscribers. I mean, it's nothing. I'm not massively exploding. But compared to the fact that it took it took a good like three quarters of a year just to get to about 5,000. And then in the last quarter, we've got 7,000 more on top of that. It's just um, it's growing quite quickly there. So... 
more and more people are coming along who haven't been with us since the beginning and so they haven't seen the growth and the progression of the channel so um and my i don't know how that links into age of empires at all i lost my chain of thought there didn't i Anywho, I will end that episode there. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. I do wish you all the very best of days. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navar and Aden Perimad Melonin, Berio, Irefen and Eilflen, and farewell. <laughs>